Hello and welcome to this fourth video in this series on how to getting started with C Sharp. In this video we will talk about flow control where I will walk you through the conditional statements and the looping statements. And when it comes to conditional statements we have two statements I want to talk about and that is the if statement, actually the if else statement and then we have the switch statement which could also be known as the switch case statement so first of all let's make some space to the if else statement and just to play around with it i want to create two variables let's call it a and say that is 10 and a b that is 11 that's fine so when we use the if statement we're going to say if and then we put an open and a clothing parentheses and then some curly brackets so what this means is that we have if this statement or this condition is true then it will execute the code between these curly brackets so let's say that a is less than b and this should be true then we can say console write line and say a is less than b and just close it off so if we run this console app now we can see that we enter the if statement and say that a is less than b because this is true but now when we know the if we can actually expand this so we can say else do something else so in this right line we will just type else so let's say that we change the value of b to 9 and we run this then we should enter the else and that's because now that b is actually smaller than a so a is no longer less than b so it will take the else statement instead but we can actually expand this even further because we can also say else if just like this and again let's write the console write line and in this case we could go and say that a should be equal to b and then let's say that a is equal to b so now if we make b 10 instead and let's run the application again we can see that we're going to enter the else if statement where a is equal to b and because that is true then we get this piece of code so now that we have a good understanding of the if else statement then let's jump to the next conditional statement which is the switch case so let's comment this out and go down to our switch case actually i want to take these variables and take them with me we just need one and the way we start a switch case is that we type switch and then we want to feed this switch with like an a parameter or just a value and like we did with the if statement we make these curly brackets because our case are going to be executed inside this switch so what we will do here is that we will type case and in our case it's 10 so let's just say that it's 10 and then we want to specify what it should do if the case is 10 so let's go and write a console write line again and say this is 10 and remember to close it off and then we say break because then we will break through of the switch statement and in a switch statement we can have multiple cases so if i just take this copy and paste it and we say 11 instead then we say this is 11 so whatever we put in here it will check if this value will be equal to any of the cases so in our case we put 10 in and it will be 10 so it will execute the console write line this is 10 this is but let's say that it's not 10 and it's not 11 what we'll do then then we can make a last option which will be default and then say console write line and say that you did not hit any of the cases and we want to break it again so let's try and run this and you can see that we hit this is 10 because our value is 10 but if we say 12 and run it again you can see you did not hit any of the cases so that's basically how switch and case statements work I would say that the switch statement is not used that often. I've been programming for many years now and it's very rare that I use the switch case statement. Of course, someone might use it a lot more, but I really think that the if else statement is the most popular one. So that was actually our conditional statements. So let's comment this out and go down to our looping statements. And in this video, I'll walk you through four looping statements. We have the for loop, we have the while loop, we have the do while loop, and at least we have the for each loop. And not to make this video so long, I want to copy and paste some of the code I have to show you some examples. So let's start with the for loop. 
and I'll just walk you through this. This is a for loop. You start by saying for, and then you have again this opening and closing where it will look at the condition inside. And as long as this turn out to be true, it will make another loop in the for loop. And the for loop is actually a little bit special because it's just this one that it's looking at. If this is not true, then it will just go out of the loop. So what we do here is that we actually make a variable at first and say that the i, which is an int, should be equal to zero when we start the for loop. And then we have the condition where we say that if i is less than 10, then it's true. And then we want to loop it again. And finally, we say that every time we have looped this for loop, we're going to increase i by one. So just to understand the logic a little bit better, we start with having the i at zero at the first loop. It checks that i is zero here. So that is less than 10. Then we run the loop and we're going to display. In this case, it would be zero. And when it has looped through all the code inside, it will then go up here and say, okay, we have to increase it by one. And then it goes again over here and say, now i is one. So it's still less than 10. So we will run this for loop again. And we're going to display the number one. And it will do that until when this is going to be 10. When it increased from nine to 10, it will go over and say 10. Is that less than 10? And it's not. So it will just jump out of the loop. And just to show you how it works, uh, what we expect here is that we have a zero at first and the last that it should be displaying is nine and all the numbers will be on separate lines so let's try and run the console app and as you can see we have zero to nine so the for loop is working as we expect and this is of course hard coded normally you would have just a variable that you decide how many times that the for loop should run but let's go to the next looping statement, which is the while loop. So I'll just copy it in here. And in this case, we have an integer, which is also zero, just like before. But this time we declare it outside our condition here. And what the while loop is doing is that it takes this, which was zero, and then try to look if the zero is less than 10 and in this case it is, or actually it will always be. So it will go down to the console write line and write out a zero for us and then it will increase the i with one and go back and see if the statement is still true and as you can see it actually remind much of the for loop except that this was inside here and this was also up here so it's really just up to you if you want to use the for loop or the while loop because they work pretty much like the same there is only small differences but now that we have been taking a look at the while loop let's jump to the do while loop so this one is a little bit different because we still have the variable which is zero but this time we start with the keyword do and then we have the open and closing brackets and at last we say while and then again we have these parentheses where we need to have something that is true inside before it can run again but the big difference between this do while and the for and while is that no matter if this while is false at the beginning it will always run this at least one time and that's because it starts by printing it out and then check if the next statement is true. So now that we know to the do while loop, let's go and look at the for each loop. And in this case, you actually want an array or a list that you can loop over. So in this case, we make an array of integers that we put inside the variable numbers, and then we give them the values one, two, three, four, five. So what this for each will do is that first we have to specify that it's a for each that we want to use, but then we say that we want to specify an integer, which we call number, and it should came from the numbers array. So we say in numbers. So it's like saying, take a number that is in our numbers array and you can also do this with a list if this was a list instead then you could also use the for each but what it will do is just that it will loop through all the numbers save it in the number variable and every time we loop we will write it out on separate lines by using our number variable so if we run this then we can see we get the one two three four five and you can also do this with strings. So now I just created this string array called names. And if we take this names variable and put it instead of our numbers, then you can see that we get an error. And this is because we cannot convert string to int. 
so we will also have to say that it should be a string and when we run it now we should get the names so as you can see we get the john jens and charlotte but of course when you program you want to have some names that make sense now we look at the names and we actually put it inside a variable called number so in this case we would call this name instead and also name down here but that is basically how for each uh, working when you come to some object oriented programming then for each loop is actually pretty nice to have because if we now have a list of some persons and let's say inside that it is a person so we say person and that the object that we have is a person instead of a string and actually this should be a small p then if we have a person with a lot of attributes or values we could in the end say that our person and then we say dot name for example if the person we have saved have a name we say dot name and we could copy and paste this and say dot h i know this can be a little bit abstract if you don't know about objects but i will in the future make a video on this but it was just to keep in mind that this for each loop is very important and it's very easy to use when it comes to object oriented programming which is also the way that i want this course to go but i think we have covered most of the flow controls that are important in c sharp so please go and like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel to follow along in this course and else i'll see you in the next video